I want to take you somewhere. To this, this Savior, this elder brother, the first begotten of many brethren, the first born of the dead, the first begotten of many brethren, our friend. Jesus is our friend. He is our creator. He is our savior. He is our Lord. He is our husband-to-be. And he is our, the CEO of the planet. And we will serve with him as kings and priests. Are you ready for your prophetic journey? I know how often in this church that I spend time pointing you in your eternal journey reminding you of who you are and where you are going because that's what the cross provided for mankind. Even those that died in the faith before Jesus, God the Father brought up through the valley of the shadow of death and placed them in heaven to wait the resurrection. Those of us are joining, whether we live or whether we die, your calling And your election and your selection is more than a historical event. It's life. When we get there in the millennium, I want to make sure all of you make it. I want to make sure I see all of you in the new heavens and new earth. And please pray that I make it too. You know what the Apostle Paul said? Paraphrasing what the Apostle Paul said. He said, what a horrible thing it would be to bring you the truth of God and the greatness of God for your eternal journey and your salvation, and I myself be a castaway. (whistles) 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 The power of the death and resurrection of Jesus is the Father's coup against a fallen son. Satan cannot raise you from the dead. So I listen to him. The great coup, the great thing of the Father of all spirits did with Jesus. And the great power, and the greatest power, and one of the greatest powers of the risen Christ, the risen Jesus and the cross is this. The Father is now able to recover what he lost in the tragedy of the Garden of Eden. And aren't you glad to be first fruits of the cross in your generation? A first fruit that you can be reclaimed out of the desolation of your generations. You can be reclaimed out of and placed into the eternal family of God, our Father. His sons and his daughters, you are. Would you like to join your big brother? Isaiah chapter 53. I want to read the whole chapter. I'll try not to editorialize. I said the key word is try. Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So much for your Christian bookstores. So much for all the divination pictures of this smiling, effeminate, six-foot-five Jesus with long hair, dreamy brown eyes, sometimes with a halo around his head, that you would desire him as a man. Garbage. Religious divination. Not one person knows what Jesus looks like as a man. Didn't have cameras back in those days. This is well. You know, one of the, I think that I say this with tongue in cheek that one of the great, the wisdoms of the Father, why we don't know what Jesus looks like, is we have enough Elvis impersonators already. Come on now, work with me. He, we, we have this need, I think we have this need of, of fantasy. 
That's, div- that's what divination is. Fantasy. Which makes you fanatical in fantasy. And, you, and, and a lot of people won't recognize Jesus in heaven because he doesn't look like the picture of their mantle. Or in the front cover of their old family Bible. Which is simply a fabrication of men's minds. The prophet said he was not a man, ladies, that you should desire him. God forbid the guys. Jesus would, Jesus would have a lot of male friends today in, his, in those pictures I see of him in Christian bookstores. I'm just saying. Just saying, Pastor Donna. Just saying. What did the prophet say Jesus looked like? There, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He has no form nor comeliness. What's comeliness? Cute, good looking. It was shocking to find out in the history of some of your greatest male movie actors that appeared as macho hunks of men were actually effeminate on the inside. It's a shocking thing to see a male not be a male. Let's move on. Verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. So what what did you say your problem was today? You feel a little despised and rejected by men? You're in good company. You know, I'm not going to read this, but one of the things that happened, you know, Jesus contrary to Catholic dogma, had other half-brothers and sisters. Joseph married had more children, folks. The Bible says so. And Jesus would be time to go to the synagogue on Passover, and his, his, his siblings around him, the half-brothers and sisters, would scorn him. This is in your Bible. You can find it. And laugh at him and scorn him and say, Jesus, hey, Jesus, uh, you're going to be late for synagogue so you can go up and do your thing. They laughed at him. His own family, his own brothers and sisters made fun of him. And you think you're having a rough day with your family. He understands. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him when he was on the cross, disfigured. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God, and was afflicted. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That literally in the Hebrew says, by our continued fellowship with him, we are healed. In the the actual Hebrew, this came, out of the, this came out of a little bit of difficulty with King James, by the way, folks. The actual Hebrew says, by our continued, if you look up the Hebrew Bible and the Hebrew Masoretic text, it literally says, and I have one in my library, it says, by our continued fellowship with him, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. No self-pity there. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked. 
and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him, for he hath put him to grief. When you shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. And by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. What a guy. Isaiah 52, beginning in verse 6. Therefore my people shall know my name. Wow. Do you know his name? There's no greater name. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. This is the one that's the, this is just preceding chapter 53, indicating we're bridging here, see, between Isaiah 53 back to 52. We move over to Zechariah, where we've been in chapter 12 and 13. We're getting a collage of things that we're looking at here. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that brings good tidings, that publishes peace, that brings good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigns. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together they shall sing, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy. You can come up if you like, Pastor Donna, because we're about to move into that dimension of just rejoicing this morning. Break forth into joy. Sing together. Who? The people that know my name shall break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from thence, Touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be clean, you that bear the vessels of the Lord. For you shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord will go before you. And the God of Israel will be your re-reward. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished at you, his visage shall be so marred more than any man and his form more than any the sons of men. This is when he was beaten and scourged and, and the word says you wouldn't even recognize that he was a man. Let me read this again. As many were astonished at you, his visage, his, his face, his body was so marred more than any man and his form more than any of the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. 
the king shall shut their mouths at him. This is when he comes as king over all the earth, Messiah, and we shall rule and reign with him. And some of you will be placed in every city, somewhere, every nation around the face of the earth to rule with a rod of iron. This is preparation time. Folks, I don't know. I, I mean, if you were to hear a prophet come talk to you, then read your Bible. Because what you're hearing is the future, but the path, the future has been secured by the Father's will. And as defined and spoken by the prophets, but sealed and established by one of you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth died for you, a man dying for men. For that which hath not been told them, they shall see, and that which they have not heard, they shall consider. Thank you for letting me read to you the word.